Amen. 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 Glory to God. Um, and not only did I acknowledge the visitors, uh, Sister Melita's family, but I want to acknowledge the fact that my mama.
witnesses. Somebody say witness. Witness. Telling people all about me everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. Yeah. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. May God bless the readers and the hearers and the doers of God's word. Uh, let me pray. Father God, I just decrease over to increase. Oh, Holy Spirit, show up in this place. Do what you will. Run from the front to the back, from the top to the bottom, oh God. Run through this place, oh God. And Holy Spirit, just rest down on us this day, oh God. Open up our minds, our ears, our hearts, oh God. Open it up, oh God. Make it cloud, oh God. Uh, do what you will with us so that we will be able to receive your word and be forever changed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, since March 2nd, since March 2nd, Ash Wednesday, y'all remember our March 2nd, Ash Wednesday, we as believers have endured and experienced a series of ups and downs if you've been living and breathing. I'm sure since March, like most people, you've experienced ups and downs, and then of course since March 2nd, we were in the Lent season, we were fasting, we were praying, we were repenting, and then we started celebrating the coming of a king on Palm Sunday upon the beginning of Holy Week. But by the end of Holy Week, by the end of Holy Week, we started to remember the horror of a crucified Savior. And then we went on the ups and downs of that and bounced back uh, with the joy of the resurrection, Resurrection Sunday. And now, and now, uh, we still on a roller coaster ride because we are preparing to proceed forward to Pentecost Sunday with great expectations. Did anybody have great expectations as we approach Pentecost? Pentecost, yes, we're in the midst of Pentecost. And this is a time to be reinvigorated, reignited, and be revived. Anybody, anybody want to be revived? Anybody need to be revived in this season? But Lord, have mercy. Like most things in life, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Look, I know it's hard sometimes yes. to gain and keep your momentum and keep yes. it when you're not even clear of the what, the why, or when. You, you, it's hard to keep your momentum when you don't understand the why of a thing. And I don't know about anybody else, um, uh, but I like to know why, why of a matter. In fact, in fact, uh, most of my family and friends can uh, testify that um, I ask a million questions about a situation or a topic or a discussion. <laughs> uh, it, it irritates them sometimes. I, I just have a thing with the uh, why, why, why did it happen? Why did they do it? Why is this, this happening? What is the motive? What are their motives? What's, what's behind the action of it all. And in fact, uh, family and friends, they know this of me. And so when they come to tell me something, they preface it. It's like, Rosalind, hold up. I'm going to tell you this. But don't ask me no questions. I, I, I don't have no answer. I just want to share this with you. Don't ask any questions because I have no answers. Anybody else like me when you have questions, don't come and cop, give me a little bit. Put it in context. I need to understand why. I need the motive. I need the, the behind the scene details. Yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, that recently happened with me and my sister. Uh, she called me and alerted me about something happening, and, and she didn't give me the details. She knew that was a mistake. I started in texting her, asking a series of questions, and then she responded, quote, I'm trying to make arrangements. I know you are concerned, but if you ask me one more thing, I'm going to scream. Quote, quote, quote. Amen, amen. And so, I, if, I just, if I am in this alone, I'm like, oh, okay, praise God. I'm not by myself. So today, today, I just want to tackle and deal with the topic of purpose. Purpose as a church and individuals. What is our purpose? And, and so if you will just bear with me for a few minutes um, with the sermon titled, The Power of Purpose. The Power of Purpose. The remix would be The Power of Why. The Why Thing. The Power of the Why Thing. Uh, and so then I texted 
today, in our text today, uh, Jesus has resurrected and was spending time with his disciples, giving them some last minute instructions before he once again departs, once before he ascends to be to the right side of the Father. And he, 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 he's down here on earth, post-resurrection, tying up loose ends before he goes away. Uh, and have you ever been, uh, been planning and getting ready to go on a trip and you start getting things all tidy up in order before you go? You start reviewing and reiterating and going over the checklist of things to do and you're telling your spouse and your children, your members of your team and the committee um, these things. You're going on the checklist. You're checking it twice because you're going to be absent. You're not going to be there. And although you told them you went over this list a hundred times before you do it one more time, and then you sum it up and say, I've left directions on the fridge. I'm going to text it and email it to you as well. And then you wrap it up and say, you know what? Call me if you need me. Call me. Call me if you need me. Because you don't want your family, your friends, your teammates to be left ill prepared. Anybody is like me. You don't want them to be ill prepared. You don't want them to be ill equipped. You don't want them to feel like they hung out to dry. You wouldn't want that because if you ever experience somebody leaving you hanging in the wind, in the breeze, no tools, no resources, it's not a very good thing. And it, it irritates me when you leave me hanging dry, when you, you don't uh, just give me a heads up about a thing. It, 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 it irks my nerves. Yeah. I'm usually, and most of the time, I won't say all the time because I might be lying if I said I ain't going to lie at the pulpit, but most of the time, generally, if I'm not going to show I'm going to let you know about it. If, if I, I can't do something, I'm going to talk to you about it. If I'm going away, I try to cross all my T's, dot all my I's, and say this, that, and the other. And then and if you still have questions, you can what? Call me. Uh -huh. And so as we continue in this series of fighting power, fighting power series, fighting of a good fight of faith, uh, we need to deal with the why. Uh, why are we fighting uh, a good fight of faith? Uh, uh, many people have that question. They may not want to admit it in public, but they, they do, they do. Uh, uh, they want to know the why, because uh, if there's no why, if there's no purpose, what's the point of it all? Amen. What's the point of it all? And so the question comes as it relates to our text today, why? the apostles need to stay in Jerusalem. What does it have to do with us today? Well, why? Why did they stay? And what does it mean for us that they stayed? Uh, well, why? Why? The question is why? Uh, thank God. God said they stayed because they needed what we need today, and that is power mm -hmm. for the God's purpose. Somebody shout yeah. power. Power. Power, power, and understanding that first, first, God's purpose has power. God's purpose has power because it comes with a prevailing promise. God's purpose comes with a prevailing promise. God promises never to leave you yes. nor forsake you. Yes. That's the word. Yes. That's the word. And our text says today, once when he was eating with him, Jesus, eating with the disciples, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. Good God Almighty. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He, he said, he's going to give you, he's going to send a promise. And Jesus said, I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few days, mm -hmm. you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will yeah. be our baptized, yeah. good yeah. God yeah. Almighty. Not only will we water, but we're going to be baptized with fire. And the apostles, the apostles, the apostles, they needed to stay in Jerusalem to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they had been baptized uh, with water, but they needed the fire. Somebody say fire. I believe, and when I 
was preaching from John 20, chapter 20, and when Jesus was resurrected, and when he came that first day, and you know, Didymus, Thomas was missing, and the other 11 were there, um, the other 10 were there, and, and Jesus made the visitation, he showed up behind the door, and said, then I take you back to it to refresh your memory, and it says, on the same day of the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, what did he say? Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side, and then were the disciples glad, they was happy about it, they was glad and happy to see the Lord. And then Jesus said to them again, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And this is it, catch it, catch it, it says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them. He breathed on them, and he followed up and said, say it unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Good God Almighty, I hope you didn't miss it. He said, receive the Holy Ghost, and they received the Holy Ghost and was born again. They needed the fire power of the Holy Spirit to be activated. Yeah. But God, so Jesus breathed on them, I'm like, God breathed life and, and spread, um, breathed his breath into Adam so that he would come alive. Jesus breathed on them so that they shall come alive again, be born again. But God is good. Somebody say, but God. But God. But God. God, but God. promises and do not return void. And God came through with his promise. Uh -huh. Not only did Jesus breathe on them, um, then the promise was fulfilled that the Holy Spirit would come. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. Uh -huh. Brother Bobby, yeah. on Pentecost Sunday, y'all know the word, you know the story, that the Holy Spirit sat down on tongues of fire, and they started speaking in tongues, um, and so first, not only that God's purpose and power, because of his prevailing promise, you know, he will deliver, it, it, it prevails, it does not fail, uh-huh, uh, and so his, 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 his purpose has power because he will do what he said. Yes, amen. He will do purpose, his purpose, God's purpose. Uh, second, God's purpose has power because of his prevailing presence. Uh, his prevailing presence. And how many of you know that God is omnipresent? Uh, meaning God is every everywhere. Presence, everywhere. Rest assured, God is everywhere you go. Everywhere yes. you lay your head. Everywhere you step. Everywhere and not only is he there watching what you're doing, he's listening to what you're saying. Woo! He knows every, your every move, every move, every move. Yeah. Good God Almighty. I mean, it's just like having somebody on a reality show that has a camera on yeah. 24-7. But the problem is, for some reason, we forget that God is there. And mm. so we do what we do. We do what we do. But just say, but God, but God. And so on this Day, the text, the book of Acts states, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so the Holy Spirit showed up and showed out on Pentecost Sunday. Uh, how do I know? Uh, because the, the tongues of fire set on them. And, and when the power of the Holy Spirit is present and activated, y'all, y'all saw that. Activate, activate, Holy Spirit. Y'all seen the TikTok. Uh, and if the Holy Spirit is present and activated, when the Holy Spirit is activated, um, there is power. Them. You want the gift when, when the Holy Spirit shows up so that when you pray, when you come into the sanctuary and you invoke the Spirit of the Lord, you are asking the Holy Spirit to come down and rest in this place so that you will have power of wisdom, power of knowledge, power of faith, healing, miracles, signs, and wonders, prophecy, and discerning spirits. Good 
blood. Anybody need the guilt of the Holy Spirit uh, so that we may worship God in spirit and truth? So we as a church may serve, may we may you evangelize, make disciples, and be strong as a unified body. Anybody need some power? Anybody, do you understand that you need power to go out there and talk to somebody about God? Yeah. You need power yeah. to be able to go and serve somebody who's ungrateful? You need power Woo. to show up on the job and everybody, Woo. most of the people, or even just say one person looking at you side out and don't like you. You need power when you show up at school and the bully is there and the pilgrims and teachers won't yeah. do nothing. Oh, <laughs> 
they said purpose. I don't want you to go away with me without no good purpose. And it simply is to be a witness. Amen. To be a witness Amen. of God's power. To be a witness of God's sound miracles and wonders. wonders. So the purpose is to be a living witness to God, to live it you. Be a living testimony of what God has done for you. How how he's brought you up out of the mud. How he's picked you up and turned you around. Not that you're perfect. uh, It's through the power of a a living, risen Savior that you're able to keep walking. and You're able to keep talking even when you want to lay down and die. It's his power. It's his power. And we are to be a witness. And when we are a witness to who God is to others, somebody else will be saved. Someone else will be challenged to do their best version. Someone else will will be inspired to not give up and give in and give out. Someone else will be inspired to do and to help someone else like you help them in their moment. When you are living testimony, when when you are witness for God, he makes us all stronger as a family and a community. When you are witness, anybody else a witness? Anybody can testify about the goodness of God. Just give her a hand clap of praise and say, power, power. I I got purpose. Say, I got purpose. I got purpose. I got purpose. I got purpose. purpose. But there might be someone here today that's been struggling with knowing their purpose. They're stuck to it. You don't know what way to go, which way to turn. You you, you keep asking, why? <laughs> why? What next? What's my why? Why I'm here? What I'm supposed to do? Uh, but I, what I want to offer you today is that we can say this. I, I want to offer you Jesus the Christ, the truth, the way, and the life. If you don't walk closer. That he will lead you. He will guide you. If you are a person that has a why, you, you've been stuck in the why. What am I here for? Why? What am I supposed to be doing? I offer you Jesus the Christ. That's what I need you to do first is give your life to him. Make a decision to give your life to Christ so that you may be saved. He came here. From heaven to earth, so that you may be saved and have eternal life. If if you're unsure of the right, if you're unsure of what direction to go, and you need Christ, and you've never given your life to Christ, I invite you to give your life to Him today. Make your way down the aisle, turn your life over. And say, Jesus, I still have a whole lot of questions to ask you. And that's okay. Because you know why? He hit, he sent the Holy Spirit, the illuminator of God's truth. He illuminates God's word. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you, comfort you as you go through life. To get the why. Is there one? Is there one that needs to give their life to Christ? You, you know you need to give your life to Christ today. Might be a little scared. Might be a little ashamed. But don't allow any of that fear, false evidence, to bring you down. To stop you from getting your answers. To stop you from making certain that the one 
pain you will know if it's a soul that says by giving your life to Christ. But that's the problem. But let's, let's deal with the soul. Let's get that out of the way. Get that squared away. Cross all the teeth and dot all the eyes. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one that just needs to rededicate their life to Christ? Be backslid. Been kind of soft. <laughs> Been bouncing back and forth, but today you need to rededicate your life to Christ. Is there one? Is there one? The Bible clearly says you can you have a relationship. You've been doing pretty good. You, you, you got some answers to questions on the law ones. And, and we've been in a season of virtual church. So you don't have a church. You're not connected officially. And so the doors of St. Paul is open to you. They're swung wide open, along with our arms wide open, our hearts are warm. We, we await with great expectation. If you would like to join this church, we invite you to join us as we continue to walk and talk with Jesus. Why? <laughs> Not because we don't know the commission, the great commission, to go out and be a witness to the world, to the ends of the earth. But we have want questions for other things in our lives. And we still need direction. And we don't always get it right. So we, we offer you to come and join us. Make up hand in hand as we continue to ask our why questions and get our answers, whether here at worship service, church school, Bible study, prayer call, visitation, a phone call or a text, God can use each and every one of you, and we need one another. Amen. Amen. Is there one? We still got time. Is there one? Hallelujah. Everybody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. There may be one on Zoom or Facebook that you want to give your life to Christ. So I'm going to pray this prayer of salvation. Just repeat after me and make sure you contact us and let us know you gave your life to Christ. Father, I confess my sins. I ask forgiveness. I believe your son is Jesus Christ who shed blood on the cross, died and rose on the third day for our sins and our judgment. I give you my heart. I give you my life. And I'm forever changed. 